I tried to film this video about five minutes ago and had a few difficulties. My circuitry here just stopped working. What happened was these guys, my triggers, uh, failed and filed and fired simultaneously and destroyed uh, the sink. So one went on when the other one went off. I've got some resistors in there so it didn't really do any damage. But what I'm saying is since I changed the resistance on my coil, um, the extra current has been producing a larger, more violent magnetic field and that's been causing some interference and throwing my triggers off. So I've had to make a few adjustments. I've put in this little ferrite bead on the trigger coil just to help suppress some of the extra magnetic fields. And I've moved a few wires around to clean it all up a bit and just remove some of the jumble. Um, and that appears to have worked. So this thing is back up and running at 500 odd volts. Um, okay, the EMF was stopping it at about 300 before. Um, so yes, changing the resistance from 1.4K down to 1K has uh, made a big difference. Um, but the main objective of that was to increase the output voltage by increasing the RPM. So if I run this up to 400 volts now, the output voltage is 140 volts, give or take, whereas before it was only 110. So I've got the extra RPM per volt that I was after, and it doesn't appear to have sacrificed any torque. Um, the, uh, the light globe I'm using um, still goes very brightly, but one thing I have noticed is, the last video I made, I reported back um, the poor efficiency I was getting um, with this extremely heavy alternator on the back. And basically, to light my 28 watt glow, um, I was using about 40 odd watts, maybe a bit over. Um, yeah, the efficiency was very poor. The efficiency was something in the range of 50%. But um, when I decouple the generator, as you see here, the motor runs really beautifully at one watt, maybe even a bit less. When I couple the generator and no load, the, um, the input power goes up to about 15 watts, um, 15, maybe even 18 watts, just to, just to spin this generator, which is very hard to spin. But what happens when I put the globe on there is that I get about 15 or 20 watts of light for an extra 15 or 20 watts of input power. So although the overall efficiency is very low, you can see that half of that is directly attributed to mechanical losses and the actual input to the output minus the mechanical losses is something in the range of 100%. Um, and that's at this high power level. What happens when it's only running at one watt is that I still get what I can estimate to be is at, le at least five watts of mechanical energy probably closer to 10. So it is very efficient. Um, that's why I reported back on this video. Um, I might even make one more before the uh, big motor comes. But we're going to up the geometry so we get cheap source of torque. As you can see, the, this is the input pulse to these 4017 chips. They are decade counters. So if you supply them with 10 pulses, they split up the 10 pulses. I can supply them 10 pulses from a single source, i.e. from there. So it's the same as hitting a switch 10 times, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. But that's awkward to work with. So what that's doing is swapping those 10 pulses to 10 separate outputs, which I can use individually. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and so on and then it resets, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I can take just one of those 10 outputs and put that to use from a succession of inputs like that, from one source. So 
although that explanation is not brilliant, if you watch it two or three times, it'll probably make sense. So it's going very well. The inputs are nice and clean. Uh, very clean, in fact. And the output's looking good. Um, I've solved my filtering problem, at least for now. But please note it is a problem um, because I'm going to take another few hundred ohms off this coil so I get more speed because um, I want more power out of it. And that will be one of the last tests I have to run before I build the bigger version. Um, and I suspect as that occurs, there will be more power, more current going through the coil due to less resistance. I'm going to have even more problems with filtering. So I might have to even change this entire circuit to suit. But hopefully I'll be able to just clean it up with a bit of professionalism and a bunch of filters and so forth. Um, much as you would expect from something you buy in a shop. Um, except this enormous coil is a bit more troublesome. But I suspect it will be solved with the same principles. Anyway, thanks for watching. Come back for the next one because um, this is a great little machine. Thank you very much.